Hi you guys, welcome to another video. So this one will be about the art business and the art industry. So I know there is a lot to cover about this and I hope that I have some good tips for you because I've been in this for a very long time and uh, I want you to be aware of some things that are quite important. So please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe so that you keep seeing these videos. And these videos might help you so it doesn't take a lot of time. It's just like one, se one second. You click the subscribe button and also click the notification so that you know when things are happening. Okay, so let's go into the art business. As you know, I graduated as an architect because everybody told me that uh, being an artist wasn't a profitable business. But that's not true. That is completely not true. The profitable business for you, let me tell you, what is profitable for you is your passion, is the thing that you love the most. It's not just some random thing that people tell you to do or that, or that you can search net worths in websites. It's what's important for you is what's profitable for you. So I was an architect, I was working in a couple of offices, but I've always wanted my business. So it came a point in my life where I was fed up with the way that my career was going and I decided that I wanted my business and what better than art because art is my passion and I knew it in my heart that if it is my passion, I will do everything I can to make it work. If it's not your passion, it's like you're just running on an empty tank. You're just half gassing it. So if it is your passion, you will give it all. And that's what's gonna make the difference not just working at a job that gives you the money that you want, but it is making the most of what you love. And what I've always loved is art, especially painting, painting portraits, painting traditional art, painting kings, queens, fantasy characters. That was always my passion. So in a point of my life, I decided that that was going to be my business. So I started, started painting daily, posting it on social media while I was still working in an architecture office. It took me two years to be a full time artist. So it might take you some time to launch your business. You might have to have another job to support you while your business is taken off. But during that time, even during that time, because I was using, using social media a lot, I got invitations to uh, exhibitions. And uh, that kind of launched my career. And also, I don't know why, but because it was my passion, I searched a lot about it in the internet and started doing newsletters, built a website, started contacting people, contacting galleries, contacting art shows. So because it is my passion, I did everything I could for it. So that made it turn on quickly, made it go further. And that's the difference. That's the precise difference. And uh, because of that, it started growing and I was able to become a full-time artist. But 
I have always seen being an artist as being a businessman. Very seriously, I studied about business. There's a lot of things that you can look up in the internet, coming up with business plans, with how much you want to make that year. And uh, I didn't want to be a struggling artist. That notion of the starving artist didn't fit well with me. Abundant artist. That's what you should think of, being an abundant artist and doing everything you can to achieve it. And there is a lot of things that you can do to make that work. And it doesn't always involve selling your paintings. It doesn't always involve that. So when you are starting, you can build your website. Even if you're not starting, even if you are doing this for years, build your website, start selling prints, start selling merchandise. If you can, even do a book with illustrations. Put it everywhere you can. Put it on Amazon so that people can easily access it and start making money. Start making money so that you can get your feet on the ground and continue producing your art. And then of course, use social media a lot. I know this is a hard thing to do, but instead of just scrolling through social media and seeing what other people are doing, Pay attention to what you are doing. Prepare your posts. Prepare your taglines. Prepare everything. Then just post it. Put it in as many websites as you can so that you become visible. The more visible, remember that I told you that because I was posting, I got invitations for exhibitions. The most visible you are, the better. So try your best to become visible and then you start getting those invitations. Then it's not you contacting the galleries, it's the galleries contacting you, the clients contacting you. And then you start getting your array of clients and then you start getting the connections from the art business. And then you can sell your originals for a pretty high price. And then keep the cheap things for the prints. And that's something that is very important for me because I don't like that because somebody can't afford an original, they can't have the image that they love in their house. So canvas prints are very important for me and a lot of other merchandise like pillows, t-shirts, all of that. But at least canvas prints is a very good way for somebody that can't afford your art to have it in their home. They can even frame it beautifully. And today there are companies that completely reproduce your paintings and make them look amazing. Sometimes you can very difficulty, with a lot of difficulty, tell the difference. So do that, start making money other ways. Not, and you can even license your art. China and Japan are places that are very big in licensing. So go to licensing shows. Don't just go to art shows. Go to other places that are maybe not the conventional places to go. And you can license your art. It not only becomes more visible in Google, but you gain some pretty good royalties out of it. And then when you are able to sell your originals for a high price, then you start making more money and you start living a better life. So remember, 
the abundant artist. That's what I love, the abundant artist. And the more successful your career is, the more inspiration you have, the more ideas you have, and one thing that is very important for me, you might like commissions. You might like them. Everybody is different. But me personally, I don't like commissions. I sometimes take them, but twist them in my own way. I would do a portrait of somebody and make them look like a queen or like a king or like a business, businessman from the 16th century. So you can do portraits and give it your own twist, but don't just do what people tell you to do. Do what inspires you. And that's what keeps me motivated. I mostly paint what I love. That's a thing that you should do. Don't just fall into a market and then try to satisfy that market. Satisfy yourself doing what you love, painting or sculpting what you love, and then try and find your niche. Try and find the market for what you do so that you're not dependent on commissions. You can keep doing, creating what you love. And then the people that are in your niche will want what you have. So that is quite important. And also the newsletters. Keep the newsletters floating. Whenever you have a new painting, keep a list of your clients. Keep a list of your clients. Or people that just like your art. Keep that list and email them new things that you might have. Because most of the times, somebody that already has bought something from you has a lot more tendency to buy more. So those are kind of the clients that you need to focus on. Be nice to people. Be nice to people. Just treat people well. Build a friendship. And then out of that, good things will come. Don't just be the isolated artist painting, 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 and just hoping that one day you will get into a gallery that will sell your paintings. Because again, that is like having a job. And being an artist, you don't want to just have your job. You want to take control, have your business, and keep your business running. And that's how you become an abundant artist, not being just dependent on other people, but taking control, getting it into your hands, and making it work. Doing, doing what you love and making it work for you. Okay, and I think that for today, this is what I have to talk about. A lot of more things will pop up for sure, and I will share it with you guys. Probably how to approach galleries, because there is a very specific way to approach galleries. You don't just email them with your portfolio. That is the worst thing you can do. They will just disregard you. So there is like, consider yourself like a spider, that you're building your web, you're building your web so that you can catch the flies. You know what I mean? You don't just throw things like a spider. A spider doesn't just throw herself. I'm sorry for the example. I know that a lot of people don't like spiders, but it's a great example. A spider doesn't just throw herself at the fly. She won't catch it. She won't catch it. So you kind of start needing to build your web with the emails, with the website, 
with going to openings, going to art shows. Build your website and then you will catch those flies, I promise you. Okay, subscribe and see you on my next video. Bye.